of course, after suffering the heartache of the, the Man City defeat on penalties, um, how long really did it take you to get that game out of your system? Or in some way, do you think you ever did? Uh, I did get it out of my system, but it did take a while. I mean, the one thing I would say is uh, on a uh, personal level, we, we as a family, me, me and my kids and my wife, we, we flew off pretty much the next day to America um, for, a few, for a couple of weeks. And uh, as you can imagine, the flight going out there was quite tough, but um, it, it made it tougher because when I actually got to America, the, the, the first thing we did, we, we went to a bar me and Jake, but we went to a bar just to get a drink, walked to the bar, and who did we bump into? We bumped into a load of Man United fans. <laughs> so they, they recognised me, and then that was it. I couldn't get away from it. Type of, you know, but they were great. They were gutted that we didn't obviously beat Man City, but um, you know, I never got away from it. And even at the airport going out there, I bumped into Man City fans, and it was, yeah, it took a while, you know, and it was always going to take a while. Uh, because it was heartbreaking, because we had, were so close to causing a major upset in football. Because for me, it would have been a major upset. You know, Gillingham to beat Man City in a playoff final at Wembley uh, after being, you know, God knows what the odds were, but, it, you know, would have been a, a, a major shock to everybody, I believe, because, you know, the, the status of the club, the size of the club, Gillingham, Man City, you know, there's, there's no comparison in terms of that. Um, but it just showed you on the day that we we were more ca more than capable. So um, unfortunately, it didn't turn out that way. For me, we deserved to win the game. Um, we just didn't have that bit of luck at the end that we needed when it come down to the penalties. And that's like as everybody knows, it's it's, it's a lottery. So, uh, but yeah, no, it, it took a while. It took a while. But you know what? I think in football, you just have to be. If you depending on what sort of mentality you've got, what you know, if you believe in yourself and as a person and as a group, and the thing for me was always that we had that group for the year after, pretty much. You know, it was that group was going to stay together, and we were such a tight knit group, and, and you know, the best group of players that I've ever played with. Um, I always felt that we could bounce back from it, even though. Most people would say that in, over the years, a team that loses at Wembley normally struggles the next next year. But you know, we didn't make that happen. We 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 put the the wrong from the, from the year before, right? You know, obviously the year after. So, and but that that's credit to the group. That's credit to the players. You know, the manager. You know, and, and Tony. To be fair, he's got to take some credit. He put that group together. You know, and left after the Man City game, and Peter came in, and Peter will tell you now that. You know, he inherited a very good group of players and he just tinkered it and put his own stamp on the, on the group. And, uh, you know, we had another fantastic season. I still guess, I guess psychologically, Peter had a big job to do because you needed to get that season out of your head and focus on the new one, which I guess was a very difficult task in itself. Yeah, he had a tough job in his hands, Pete, to, to you know, after the year before and, and we come so close. You know, the pressure was on. It's like any manager to, to de deliver. And uh, we had such a good season that, you know, obviously didn't work out at the end, but we, had a, we still had a fantastic season in our eyes. Um, you know, can we emulate that? Can we go one better, to, you know, with, with Peter coming in? So he knew he was an experienced manager, you know, managed England and, you know, managed some, some good clubs and had, had a lot of success. Um, so... You know, he knew what he knew what to do. But again, it goes back to the players. You know, um, they were easy for me. They were easy to manage, and I'm sure Peter will tell you that they were a really good group, very tight knit, a group that uh, were together on the pitch, were together off the pitch. Not just the players themselves individually, but the families. You know, we were everybody knew the, the wives, girlfriends, the kids. We we sort of socialised as best way we can, and that doesn't happen in football anymore. You know, you don't see that now. You know, players now don't really socialise off the pitch. Individually, they might, a few of them, but not as a group like we did. And, um, you know, that, that was, that's what made it a special group for me. And that's the reason why we, we had the success we had. Naturally, the gaffer brought in some of his own players. Uh, off the top of my head, Junior Lewis um, and, of course, Andy Thompson. So with, with those fresh faces, um, did you look around the dressing room on the first day of the season and say there's absolutely no reason why we can't emulate last season and of course go one step further yeah I always believed even if we didn't um, we didn't get 
like I say, we didn't get loads of players in because I don't think we needed to because the core of that group was still there together, you know. And uh, you know, but you know, obviously bringing Tomo in and his pedigree of scoring goals was, you know, it was a massive positive for us, you know. I've got to say, when Junior came, I didn't know too much about Junior, you know, to be fair. And you know, when he walked in, you know, it was this guy type of thing, you know. He's gangly and you know, is he a footballer type of thing? And but obviously, Pete knew his stuff and he worked with him before and. Um, you know, he came in and, and Junior put his mark on it, to be fair. It was fantastic. And he was a, you know, a big part of that, obviously, the playoff final with, with, the, with the cross for the goal for Stevie Butts, you know. So, you know, Junior came in and, but, you know, that, that group, and we, they were easy to, to, to basically step into the group. They were, they were good characters, you know. And, uh, you know, one thing that we didn't suffer, uh, in that, you know, in that group, nobody, nobody was any, any better than anybody else. There was no big time players at our football club, you know. No one, and, you know. And if anyone did step out of line, the group would just sort of jump all over them and, and make sure they stepped in the line. And, and how we did things, and how we, we, how we trained, and how we played, and how we was together, you know. And Junior and uh, Tomo come in, and they they were straight in. They settled in fantastically well for us. I guess that's another challenge for a new manager trying to find players who not only good enough to, to, to play for the team, but also fit in the team's mentality and fit into the team's attitude. As you've just said, we're together as one. There's no big time Charlies. You've got to find the right characters to add to that group. Yeah, and I think being a manager, I think, you know, myself, I think when you do your recruitment, when you actually identify a player, yes, you, you know his strengths and his weaknesses as a player, but do you know him as an individual, you know? Do you know his character? Do you, you know, do... Family, you know, I always look into, you know, the first thing I do, you, you check out the player. Obviously, we know you, you've seen it, what you can do. That's why you're looking to try and bring him into the club, what he can do on the football pitch. But what's he like off the pitch? You know, what's he like as a character? What's his family background, you know? So I think, you know, it's about the person now, not just about the, uh, just about the player on the pitch, about the person. And, you know, I think that, that that's one thing managers do now. You know, they... they they do their own work, you know, they do it properly and it's not just about that player on the pitch. It's about his, his, his way of life and, you know, and, um, you know, I think that's important and I think that's what we, Peter did, you know, certainly brought the players in and he knew what the characters we had in the club and in, in the group and uh, we didn't want to bring anyone that was, was going to disrupt that group and uh, that's why it's important you do your own work on, on, on players for me personally. That season, we made perhaps a comparatively slow start, but we, we started to gain momentum, goals all over the pitch. And, of course, we had a fantastic cup run as well. What's your... Yeah, no, it was, it, was a, it was a slow start. You know, people were saying, well, that was off the back of what happened the year before. And it probably might have been a little bit, a little bit of a slow start because every character is a different character. And, you know, is it, was that in the back of their minds what happened the year before, new manager? So it was, I think it was always going to be that, be the case. It, it took us a little bit of time to, to settle in, you know, new players coming in, um, get over the year before uh, and then find our feet again. And, and, and we did that, you know, and as you say, we, what year really, you know, to, to have a, uh, the run that we had, we picked up, we, we, FA Cup, you know, fantastic in terms of getting to the, you know, did I ever think Gillingham would get to the quarterfinal of the FA Cup? No, I, I just didn't I think, think we, did. not, you know, to, to get to the quarterfinal and, uh, and play Chelsea. Yes, we lost comfortably in the end, but, you know, for the first 45 minutes, I think it was 1-0 down at half time and then they come out and they stepped up the, but I went. I was talked about that game the other day. You know, you looked at the t the players that were playing for Chelsea that day. Phenomenal players on that pitch. You know? Fantastic. Phenomenal. Side. The names was frightening, really, for what they've done in their careers. And to us, to 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 put our wits against them was just um, yeah, to pinch yourself, really. You know. So yeah, that that was a tra fantastic achievement for the club and another great day for everybody, the families and and the, all the fans. And they come out at force. And you know, and I think that was that was. Sometimes you have a cup run, it disrupts your league form, doesn't it? You know, it sometimes can get in the way, but it just all come together. The momentum kept flowing, didn't it? And uh, we kept going. I think the only one real disappointment is we didn't get out by promotion. You know, we blew it, yeah. didn't we? Um, we blew Wrexham. it at, uh, at Wrexham. 
Um, and I remember that day coming home thinking, blimey, you know. But to, you know, I was a player still, but I was, I was actually on the getting to see the other side of it in terms of management and coaching because I was, as much as I was, I was contributing on the pitch, I was having an insight to, to what goes on in the, in the manager's office, you know, and having that some input into that. Uh, with Stevie Butts as well, you know. So, um, so on the way back, you, you, you know, it was a very somber, somber mood, and you know, it's a, it was a tough day because I think we all thought that yeah, we we could do this. We don't need to go to Wembley again, or we don't need to go through the playoffs again and, and try and get to Wembley to do it. Even though the chairman was probably happy to yeah. uh, in terms of finances, um, he was over the moon. I bet he, you know, I bet he couldn't believe his luck the way he did it uh, two years in a row, um, losing one and then winning one. Uh, but yeah, no, we we did blow it, and it, and it knocked us a little bit, and I, I, you know, but it, it knocked us. But then I think it, then we had meetings as a group and said, look, you know, we can't we can't blow it again in terms of let's if we've got to go through the playoffs again, let's get to the final and this time let's win it. And uh, you know, it's um, it pulled us together again, and we we, we were fortunate enough to. All right, yeah, we were disappointed we didn't do it outright and probably should have done, but we didn't. Uh, and we, but we went through that route of playoffs and getting to Wembley again. Before we get to, to Wigan, let's talk about Stoke. Um, obviously, the first leg at the Britannia Stadium had a bit of a slow start, but we had to uh, we had to make our way back. And your goal right at the death, for many, one of the best goals in, in the club's history. And it couldn't have come at a better time, could it? No, I mean, I haven't scored many goals in my career. Probably should have scored more, really, you know, in terms of my position. Um, that's probably one of, one of my criticisms of myself, that I should have scored more goals in the field because I had the energy to get up from box to box, um, you know, but perhaps didn't have the confidence in, in front of goal and left it to people that I felt were more confident and <laughs> let them take the accolade of scoring goals. But... Um, you know, when it comes to the playoffs, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to score a couple of important ones. Obviously, we won the year before against Preston after a minute and we hung on and got to Wembley. Uh, turned out to be the winner. And then, obviously, the Stoke game was, um, you know, that goal, even though we were 3-1 down, felt like we'd won the game afterwards. And uh, it was a phenomenal um, atmosphere uh, and feeling to actually probably, well, certainly score the best goal in my career. Uh, a real important time because at, at one stage you're thinking, blimey, we've got a mountain to climb it, to go back to Priestfield with, with 3 1. We, we, you know, even though I'd have still backed us to go to Priestfield and win 2 0, I really felt, you know, you know we, could have, we, we could have done that, you know. And, uh, but in, in the end, it was, we didn't need to do as much because it was, it was, it was only a one goal deficit, wasn't it? So, uh, but yeah, no. It was one of those games that, you know, we started off slow and, and we, but we got back into it and then they got the third goal and there was nothing on the clock, was it really? You know, it's... I was kicking the game. Yeah, it's funny because afterwards it was ironic really about the man their manager talking about where, he, where the time came from and we were talking about that the year before. Yeah, we know, we know it. everything about that. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting that when it comes to it, you know, the late we had perhaps we had that bit of luck on the day that perhaps the clock was ticking and he could have blown, but he didn't. And I, I, I realised who the referee was that day against Stoke. We're still refereeing now, and it might be in the, in the right. Premier League. Yeah, yeah. so because I, I remember it, obviously watching the highlights. Really, he was, I shook his hand at the end of the game, realised it was Mike Dean. But yeah, he had a, he had a good watch on that day, definitely. Um, but yeah, no, listen, it, it come to me that it come to me. It was one of those, you know. I think Steve. I think Stevie Butts or somebody was. I can't remember. It was was asking me to to pass it to him, whatever. And you know, I'm, yeah, just, I'm just, not to, just to your right hand side. I think someone was saying yeah. space. Yeah, I mean, someone. But there's no way. Not that time. I knew what was left on the clock. Obviously, it was not a lot. And you're thinking, well, come on, let's have a go. Yeah, I am. I'm. One of the, I am a bit of a gambler. I don't have a little bit of gamble now and again. So. Why not? Let's have a pop. He'll either go in, it'll go over, or, you know, it lit my family in the crowd behind the goal because they was all in the crowd. <laughs> uh, fortunately, it went in. It, it actually took a little bit of a bobble. If you watch the highlights, it took a little bit of a bobble off the pitch. So I think if it hadn't taken a bobble, I don't think I'd have reached, to be honest. Um, so that bobble might have just given it some elevation to get into the. Yeah, it sat up lovely. And um, as soon as I hit it, I thought it's got a chance. 
I thought he's got a chance. And then when it was, yeah, he's got a major chance of going in and it, it flew in. Give him no chance, to be fair. And you know, it's Gavin Ward, wasn't it? Goal, Ward, he said, no, it was, what's a strike? So I had yeah, no chance. And uh, as you can see, the celebration and after going in, you know, Nicky, Nicky Southall running up behind a goal and clenching his fist. Yeah. And then I did the same. And then I had a bad back in the end with a big iffy and Nora jumping on top of me and a few of the others. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a few big lads in that squad. Yeah, there was a few big lads that were squashing me, but you know, listen, what what a, what a time to score! And uh, and then was, I was on on the coach going home, and it just felt like we, without getting too carried away, because we knew we had a job to job to be uh, to do it back at Priestford. We we were quietly confident when when on that bus going home, hundred percent we was. And you know, I was speaking to my family, my brother. I've got an older brother and a younger brother. They were there, and uh, my older brother looks a little bit like me. And uh, he was getting mobbed. He got kisses. He got everything from the Jules fans saying, "Your brother's, you know, this and that, and fantastic." Excellent. He said he never had so many kisses off of people, but um, but mostly blokes. <laughs> <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, so listen. He uh, it, it, for for me as on a personal level, yeah, best goal in my my in my footballing life. Um, my, uh, and the most important one, uh, along with obviously the Preston one the year before. So um, it, it took us, it, and that goal was, uh, you know, the catalyst, I suppose, of, of getting us to Wembley. So of course, the second leg at, at, at Priestfield, the atmosphere was sensational that, that evening. And I know you've said it as a manager, you've said it as a player. When Priestfield does get going and it's full to the rafters, there's nowhere else quite like it because it's so tight and comfortable. Yeah. I mean, I've watched the highlights of that game. Again, you know, the noise, you know, um, was you know, the year before against Preston. It was, it's crazy. It's crazy noise. You know, and I've been fortunate in my career to play at, you know, a lot of big stadiums over, over the years. And, um, you know, I think when you're on the, on the pitch, you, you, you feel the atmosphere, but, you know, um, I think, even at Wembley, you know, the atmosphere was frightening against Man City with a the crowd there. And, uh, but you know what? Little old Priestfield, you know, that, that, the noise that day, that night, sorry, was, was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. And it, uh, you know, put a lump on, it puts a lump in your throat when you actually walked out onto the pitch before the game. And, and, and the levels, as you say, because it's such a tight little ground, you know, you couldn't get anybody else in there. It was that packed. And uh, the noise was... was Phenomenal. And it just drives you on. You know, that's what I miss. You know, I'm, I'm you know, a long time retired now, but, you know, I, the one thing I do miss, I massively miss playing football. Do I like managing, coaching? I, I like it and I'm enjoying it, but there's nothing better than playing. I, I love playing, you know, and I wish, I was watching Harry's Heroes the other night, you know, watching them old boys playing, you know, and going out to different countries and playing and, I wish I was on the trip, you know. I've not, never played for England, other than non-league. Um, but I wish I was on the trip. I, you know, I just wanted to be... Get your boots so on and get out there. Yeah, whenever there's an opportunity to play in charity games, I'm the first, you know, I'm putting it out there now. Anyone that wants me to turn out for them, I'm ready. I'm, I, the boots are still in the, in the cupboard and ready to play, you know. I can keep myself fit. But, you know, going back to that night, yeah, I mean, the atmosphere was, was, was frightening and um, it was um, special. And got all the family there. It was special, special nights at Jules. Never forget them. For me, I'm going to be biased. I was part of it. You know, it's they're special. You know, and they're a special group of people. You know, special fans. You know, you know. Whenever I go back there, you know, um, you always gonna have a, you know, in, in football. There's always going to be your critics. You know, but I don't think I've got many at Gillingham. You know, I think yeah, maybe as a manager I might have, uh, but again. Looking back on my managing career, they are, I'm proud of that, you know, making history in the championship. Again, I don't think there's going to be many managers, if, if at, at all, that are going to make history playing playing in the championship or managing in the championship. So, because it's going to be difficult for the club until we get to the club and get finances into the club to get to get back to that sort of, to that level. But, you know, the Jules fans, you know, to this day, you know, are still bump into a lot of them, as, as you know, living in the Kent area as well. And uh, they're so they're so warming and they bring, whenever they talk about it, it's always they talk about the good old days and uh, there have been some some fantastic times there. 
And one of those good old days was, of course, the Wigan final. Um, when you were walking through the tunnel out onto the pitch, did the Man City game enter your mind at all? Or had you kind of trained yourself to think, that's gone, Not, there's nothing I can do about it, so let's focus on the job at hand? I think there's always a, you know, a, a little bit of a, a, an element of thinking about the year before. In that, I'm sure if you speak to all the guys, I'm sure they had that a little bit in the back of their mind. Um, but you know, it's, it's a different game. It's another. It's a different team. It's the same venue. Um, mm. But you know, I think it's there's there was a bit more pressure on us this time because of the year before. You know, we was up massive underdogs. Even though Wigan a massive club, as you look at them now, still you know. But I felt there was a little bit more pressure on us because we, because of what happened the year before. You know, and the reason why there was a bit more pressure is because we didn't want it to happen again. We didn't want course, it to happen yes. again. You know, that, that was the biggest thing. I, you know, we didn't want to go out there and be, you know, on that, that losing tag again, that heartache again of, of me get, getting on an aeroplane, going abroad somewhere and bumping into some Wigan fan or, or somebody else. So, unlucky. I didn't want, I didn't want to hear them, hear them words. You've done well, but you're unlucky. I didn't want to hear them words again, you know. And uh, in my mind, as we're going out, we're going to win this, win this one. And... Uh, you know, I suppose the only difference for me this, this walking out of the tunnel uh, that year was I, I didn't lead the team. I was sure. I was a player coach and uh, and um, Aidy was uh, captain, wasn't he? Aidy Pennock was, was uh, yep. for the Wigan game, and um, you know, um, which was was tough on too much because Paul was yeah. left out that for that, and it was a real tough tough one for Peter Taylor. And you know, uh, I was gutted for too much because he, you know, Peter made a call and. You know, but I got it for Smudge because he's uh, what a player. You know, how many times did he win Player of the Year? Paul Smith. You know, he's phenomenal for the for the football club. But you know, it all it ended up well because he got on the pitch and he deserved to be, go up there with Aidy and and lift a trophy. But you know, so yeah, it was it was it was a tough game. <laughs> we a very tough game. We didn't. I didn't think we start. We, well, we started off okay. We didn't. I don't think we played particularly great. Um, but we dug in and, and got the result, you know. Um, and, but we kept on going. That never saved our attitude. There it was again. It was all to be seen. As a group of players, we're not giving up, you know. And you're thinking perhaps when the player got sent off that maybe we got carried away by ourselves a little bit. OK, it's, this is now going to be easy. Now we should go on and win the game. But it, it didn't turn out that way. It made it, made it harder for us, you know. And then they went 2-1 up with a penalty. And then you're thinking, oh no, what? Not again, type of thing. And we're fortunate. Pete made some changes, uh, and um, they come on, them boys, and we just found enough inner strength and desire to say, look, you know, we can do this and and, and change the game around and, and and get the result. And two bits of real quality uh, did that for us. So after Big Ify knew it, I put us a goal up. Um, I spoke to him about the goal because, of course, he'll, he'll claim it, and we, we're giving it to him, of course. Um, did you think the ball had crossed the line from where you were on the pitch? Um, do you know, I, I, don't, I can't remember what I was thinking. Um, I just had a look across the lines, but then he'd, he'd give it, you know. Probably the, the angle where I was, it was, who knows, you know. Yeah, 50-50. 50-50, unfortunately. I think uh, looking back at it, I think it is just over, isn't it? Just, yes. Yeah. Just over. Um, so it was a right call. Obviously, you know they've got the tech, uh, goal line technology in the uh, in the in the bigger leagues. Um, but you know, I think um, yeah, uh, at the time it was a case of let's hope it goes our way. And when I saw the flag going, you know, it was out in the referee. Fantastic, great start for us, you know, bundled in. And to be fair to the lad who you know, got the egos, a fantastic goal, wasn't it? Great mm. finish, fantastic uh, flick, yeah. From, from the from the big lad up front, I can't remember his name now. Um, Sorry, Hayworth. Hayworth, that's it, yeah. Great goal. Because of the first touch and then lifted it over. It was a great, great goal, to be fair. Uh, and then it all sort of, I don't know, the game was tight. And, and then obviously, the, the, the Sharpie got sent off, didn't he? You know? Mm. Was, yeah. You know, it was, a, it was a naughty... Yeah, listen, he missed time, yeah. He, he's gone through Nicky and Nicky Southall. And, uh, you know, he's always, he was on, on a yellow, wasn't he? So it was, it was pretty much uh, inevitable he was going to get the second one. And, uh, and we, we then thought, well, well, I think everybody thinks, but it never works that way, does it? Going down to 10, you know, players, teams going down to 10 minutes. It makes it harder for you. Harder, you know? yeah. 
Yeah, and it, it, that's always been the case. It, um, and it sort of pulls the the, 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 the team that goes down to 10 men, pulls them in together even more, you know, and that, that was the case, you know, they dug in and uh, and then got a penalty. I, I think the penalty's harsh. I, I've watched it many a time. I think it's a bit harsh on Ash, to be honest. I don't think it's a pen, but he's give it. Um, and then we had to dig deep, didn't we? We had to dig yeah. deep. And um, we found the resolve and the, and the desire and the never say die, you know, never never give up attitude that we can we can still do this, boys, you know. Um, even though we've taken a knock, we've got, the, you know, we have got that extra player. We've got to use it. And, and we did that, really, didn't we? We've got... What we did, we got the ball wide, you know. When you go, when you actually go, when you're playing against ten men, that's the one thing you got to try and do: try and get the ball wide and, and get balls in the box. And yes, spread the play. Spread, yeah, I mean, if you keep trying to go through the middle, you, you, it's going to break down because they're going to get everybody behind the ball, and make it difficult. Where where where's it got to come from? Let's get it wide. Let's get crosses in, and uh, we got two, yeah, two fantastic crosses and and two strikers, you know, butts. I don't know how many goals he scored. He said, but they had to tell me one day. I've said this a couple of weeks back. We've been talking about this. I'm not sure how many goals he did score for the size of him, but what a fantastic header and a great cross. And then, and then the second goal. Uh, sorry, the winner was um, typical Tomo. You know, get across the front of the defender and great ball in and, and flicked into the corner. And uh, I was chasing him. He ran to the corner flag. I was chasing after him. I was in the box myself, but. And then I told, you know, everybody went mad, didn't they? And I looked up to the chairman, I looked up to the family and, and, and the fans and thinking, it's ours. Once that went in, I thought that was it. We've, we've got it, you know, we've done it. And we've, we've, um, we've, we've probably, you know, done something that perhaps people didn't think we could do after the year before. I think there'd be a lot of people thought that perhaps Jilling won't come back from the heartache of Man City. So I think there'd be a lot of people, but... Secretly, as a group, we, we knew we could do it. And we've we done it. Someone like yourself, who's, and Smudge and, and Nicky, still through and through, played hundreds of games. Do you think it meant more to you emotionally because of the hard pain you'd suffered the year before? That's taking nothing away from the group, but you as individuals, do you think that outpour of, of emotion was partly due to the fact you'd been promoted? Partly put that heartache to one side. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it was special to everybody. But I think you're right. I mean, the likes of the Smudgers and, and, and Nicky Southalls, you know, have been at the club a long time, played a lot of games, your Ashby's, you know, and, you know, even AD Penix and, you know, got Butters, you know, them, they're them boys, you know. You know, they're, 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 they, they come through the pure days, you know, Tony's days. And then, you know, so... And they've been at the club a long time. So, yeah, I think it was special for us guys, you know. Again, not take it away from some of the boys that had come in that year and um, because they played a big part, you know, Ty Gooden and, and, and Junior, Tom O, obviously massive, massive them three in, in terms of us getting result on the day, weren't they? The three of them. Um, you know, for Butts as well, who's, who's played a lot of uh, games for Jules as well. So, I think it was special for us and it, it was, it felt we deserved it. As a, as a as a club, but as a, as a group and as in individuals, as much you put into the football club, you wanted to get a reward for it, um, and you wanted to reward the club because the club had been excellent, and you wanted to reward the fans because they come out in their force and watch this, you know, um, week in week out, and backed us, and you know, travelled around the country to to support us, and uh, it felt like we, you know, massively we've we've given something back to the fans who who came in their forces, obviously, the year before at Wembley and sort of high at Bluesian. And uh, we've given, you know, give them something to, to cheer about and, and enjoy. At 2-2, two, two, did any part of you think I might have to take a penalty? Yeah, I suppose that goes through your mind, of, you know, having to go through that again. Um, Would you have taken one? Um, yeah. I would have. I mean, I didn't take the one the year. Yeah, I was captain the year before, but you know, Tony made his decision. Um, who wants to take one? We all put our hands up. He, he picked the five, you know, um, and that that was fine. You know, listen, no matter who takes a penalty, you you got to be brave to put to to take them. If you miss, you miss. You know, it's it's one of those. You you just step up and it's you do the best you can. You pick a way to go, 
and hopefully it's the right way. Unfortunately, Man City, it was the wrong, you know, it went against us. But yeah, of course I would have been, you know, as much as I've never been a penalty taker in my career, that's not something, like I said, my, my goal record's not been uh, as a midfield player. That's one of my criticisms. But, you know, um, but if, yeah, if it was, it, we did, oh, yeah, we practiced them, we all practiced them. But then ultimately, then you'd, when it, if it came to the, to the penalty shootout, then we'd have, we'd have picked a five, or Pete would have picked a five, and we'd, we'd have gone through that situation. But yeah, of course I would have. Climbing those stairs to uh, receive the trophy, it's not something that many can relate to, especially supporters. And very few players have had that privilege. But what is that experience like? Because growing up as a footballer, it's probably that one moment you want, a very fleeting moment, doesn't last long. At what is it like? Uh, do you know what? I never thought I'd do it because I'm getting old. And uh, I never thought I'd get to Wembley once, let alone twice, you know, to actually to actually get there twice at my age, you know, 34 and then 35, it's like, blimey, you know, to get on. It was always my dream as a player to, to play at the home of football. Um, and I, I, I still say it's the home of football. Yes, Wembley now has been changed and to the new... The old Wembley's the best Wembley. I'm going to say that. Twin Towers. The old Twin Towers got to be, you know, has to be. You know, uh, never, I've not played at the new one. Obviously, too old. I'd like to manage there, uh, take a team out there one day. You never know. Um, been there, but nothing, the old one's the best one. But to walk them stairs, to be fair, after winning the game and the amount of celebrations, the amount of people jumping on each other and still running around the outside of the pitch after we'd just gone through that. I don't know where we found the energy. Not just me, but the whole team. We were still running around and celebrating and then having to walk up the steps. But what a feeling, you know, you just, you're walking up steps to, to celebrate with a bunch of players that you've pretty much lived with for the last two years. And pretty much that's where it's been. We've lived with them because they're, you know, that's, that's, they were part of each other. You know, we were part of each other's lives, you know, for two years. Um, and, um, you know, to celebrate with that group was quite emotional, really, you know. Um, and, you know, they all deserved it to, to be celebrating uh, together. Um, you know, so, yeah, it was it was an emotional time. Very, you know, brings, it brings it back to me. And for me, you know, you, you know, even to this day, you think about it and it puts a lump in your throat and you get quite emotional about, you know, that, that group and how friendly they were and how passionate they were for each other and they go to war for each other. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, I say I miss them. You know, I speak to a few of them, but I actually miss, them, miss working with that group of people. The best moment of your career, lifting that trophy up? Yeah, yeah. Has to be. You know, I've had some, I've, I've had some real highs, you know, just to, to turn professional late when I did to go and play for a massive club like Watford to start with and playing some big games at Watford and some stadiums and, you know, playing against Leeds the, the year they won the title against the likes of Cantona, Strachan, the late Gary Speed, you know, that's just named a few that day um, that was, was, was playing. Um, you know, so, but that has to be, you know, the, the, the highlight or the, or the best moment of my footballing life, you know, walking up uh, Wembley steps and, and lifting the trophy that we thoroughly deserved uh, after the year before and um, something I'll never forget it's something I'll keep watching when I can um, you know funny I spoke to Barry Ashby today you know he's doing a bit of football agency work at the moment so I keep in contact with Guy Butters you know don't speak to Smudge so much now but have done A.D. Pennock um, you know Stevie Butts Tomo now and again, Mark Patterson, you know, Sondo. All, all a, a very special group. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're good friends, you know. And um, like I said, I miss them. I miss them in the football world, you know. Mm. I wish we could get that. I'm putting it out there now, so maybe the chairman might see it. But I'd love him to be able to get that group together just for a night game. Just finally, finally, I asked Ify the same question. Um, do you remember anything about the after-party celebrations, is there anything you can broadcast or tell us that went on, or can you simply not remember? I can remember a lot, but I can't broadcast quite a bit. <laughs> um, 
certainly can't broadcast a bit. But listen, I, can, I, I don't know how I can remember because obviously um, there was a lot of beers flowing and mm. uh, I wasn't really a drinker, to be fair. I only started drinking when I found this group, believe it or not. <laughs> I wonder why. And, uh, sorry? I wonder why. Yeah. Um, but yeah, listen, back to Maidstone, the Hilton, absolute carnage. Um, bodies everywhere, F just family celebrating, the club celebrating, beers flowing, um, lots of funnies, people falling over and you just, just letting their hair down because it's been a tough two years, you know, as much as a tough year and we had, and we had a great year in terms of the cup run as well, but I, I talk about two years because it's two years of, of hard work as that group to, to achieve what we achieved and uh, so if, to see everybody enjoying themselves and then waking up the next morning with, um, well, you know, it's it's, there's a few sunglasses worn, to be fair. The saw head sunglasses, you know, some that didn't have sunglasses, some of their eyes were terrible. And then that, obviously we had the nice, the nice day of going around the town on the open top bus and yeah, enjoying that. And, the, and the fans coming out of town and, and receiving us as well. And, you know, you don't forget them days, you know, and, you know, that, that's, uh, yeah, I can remember that a hundred percent. And so I can remember a few things that I can't, uh, broadcast for yourself unfortunately but what a great uh, what a great night